What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Paris and I make videos all about candle making and the starting and managing of my small candle business, Lady Simone Candle Co. Today I'm showing you how I make my bubble candles. I just released this Warrior Mama collection of bubble candles over on Lady Simone Candle Co. It's a part of my Tag a Warrior Mama campaign. Um, if you do not know, I started my candle business as a way to heal and cope with my postpartum anxiety. And so my candle business was built with the mission to empower moms, empower women through my aromas, through my candles, um, and through my wax melts and things like that, and to just empower one another. So that is what my candle business is based on. And I just released my new collection of bubble candles, and I'm going to show you how I make those today. So let's just get started. All right, let's get to it. First, I want to walk through what I use to make my bubble candles. So first, starting with the wax over here, I use the Eco Soya PB Pillar Soy Wax from Candle Science. It comes in plate form. This is an 11 pound bag. I use, of course, the double boiler method. Um, if I need to use my Presto Pot, I will, but uh, just for making you know, um, what I need to make. The double boiler method has been just fine. So with the double boiler method, you will need a, four, a pitcher and then a pot of boiling water to melt the wax down. And then of course, here is the bubble cavity. I got this off of Amazon. It's a six bubble, cap, bubble mold cavity and it's silicone. And then here is my stirring utensil. Of course, fragrance oil. So I am using pineapple cilantro from the Flaming Candle. And then of course, uh, wick holders, my trusty hand, uh, clothes pins. And then for the wick, what I use is Eco Wick number two. And this is just a, um, a 75 foot thread of wick. And I got this from Anything Bees from Etsy. And so what I do is when I get it, I cut them up into eight inch pieces and they're already ready to go for me. Um, and then of course, threading needles, which I purchased some threading needles. It comes in this little tube right here. I got this off of um, Amazon as well. So it came with like a bunch of threading needles. So got this off of Amazon. And then, of course, alcohol and paper towels to clean up. So let's talk a little bit about this bubble mold cavity. So no complaints so far. Again, I found this off of Amazon. But what I want to discuss with you is um, on the website, On I mean, there's tons of sellers who sell these cavities on Amazon. So depending on who you go to, definitely look at the details in the specs. And I say that because... If you all are not new to my channel, but if you are new, I am very particular about formulas. I like to know and nail down how much wax and fragrance oil it takes to make any of my products, my candles, my wax melts, and now um, my bubble candles, my room sprays. Like I like to know exact amounts because for one, I do not like being wasteful. Candle supplies are expensive. And then number two, it helps me from an inventory perspective. I like to know exactly how much I have of what and um, what's left. And then it helps for the end of the year roundup for tax time. So I am very, 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 very much a stickler about my numbers. So when I went on the website and saw that it was an eight ounce cavity I said oh, okay well since it doesn't really require a lid or anything like that you know maybe it's really just an eight ounce cavity like I don't have to worry about finding the net weight at least that's what I thought looking at it because I'm like I don't really need the net weight because I can fill it all the way to the top trim the wick and it's good to go put it in the package and it's good to go so when I tested it um the eight ounce I converted eight ounces to grams, right? I used a 10% fragrance oil percentage and got those numbers. And y'all, I had so much wax left over. And I say that because I think it filled three cavities and then half of the fourth. 
if I remember correctly. I tested this a while ago. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not right. <laughs> so I'm like, maybe it maybe there is a net weight. Um, so because it didn't have it on the website, I reached out to the seller. They didn't know. They just said, well, it's just an eight ounce cavity. But I'm thinking to myself like, well, it can't be because when I enter everything into my formula and convert everything, it's not filling them up. Um, I at least wanted to see, you know, if it would fill up the one cavity, but I had so, like if it's just eight ounces, it should have just filled up the one cavity. At least that's my brain. But it filled up like three and then half of a four. So I'm like, well, that's not right. Or maybe it filled up like two and then half of a third. I can't remember, but either way, y'all, it was wrong. <laughs> it wasn't right. So I said, okay, I need to sit down and figure this out. So what I did was I just said, okay, typically for a candle jar, if it's an eight ounce jar, the net weight is usually like 6.4, 6.2. So I said, I'll try that and just go from there. And so I converted 6.2 to ounces to grams, did my 10% fragrance soap percentage, got my numbers and I was off still. So I'm like, what is the deal? Like, it's not, okay, it's not working and it's driving me nuts. And so, but this is a part of testing, right? So I said, okay, trial and error, I'ma just go old school and just slowly drop ounces and until I get it right. So I went from 6.2 to 5.8. Then I went to 5.8 to 5.6. Finally went from 5.6 to 5.4 and 5.4 was the winner. So, okay, so I said, okay, I think we got it. So basically what I did was I converted 5.4 ounces to grams. It was 100 and, well, it was a little over 153, but you all know I round to the nearest whole number. So 153, and I used a 10% fragrance oil percentage. So after I converted everything, went through the formula, I need 139 grams of wax and 14 grams of fragrance oil to fill up one cavity. And y'all, y'all know I was happy when I found it because I'm like, I do not want to keep wasting wax. Like, I don't like being wasteful. It's expensive. Um, so, 139 grams of wax, 14 grams of fragrance oil, boom pow, fills up one cavity. I found it and figured it out. So, what I'm going to do is... Um, this bottle right here is a um, one ounce bottle. And so one ounce converts to 28 grams. So 14 plus 14 is 28. So I'm actually going to make two bubble candles. So I can go ahead and just use this one ounce. I don't feel like leaving just 14 grams of fragrance oil left. So I'm just gonna do two, um, two bubble candles. So I'm going to measure out 139 grams times two um, in my pitcher. Get that melting. Um, I already know I'm gonna use this whole bottle of fragrance oil and then I will show you uh, my process from there. All right, since it takes 139 grams to make one bubble candle and I'm making two bubble candles, um, I am going to take 139 times two, which is 278. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, this on my scale, tear it to zero, and measure it out. Yes, I do normally wear gloves. Um, my gloves are all the way upstairs, and I do not feel like getting them. <laughs> Just being real. So we just gonna rock and roll with where I'm at. So go ahead, get that measured almost there. And these are gonna just be burning for me anyway, so. But I do normally wear gloves, which I recommend you do too. Keeps everything clean and sanitary. All right. So now let's prep our um, bubble mold. So what I like to do is 
take my wick and needle and of course thread it in as if you're sewing. Um, so let's get that threaded in there. Just like that, see that? Now when you first get your bubble mold, um, you're gonna have to gently pierce a hole through um, the um, middle cavity is close to the center of the middle bubble as possible. Um, so you just want to gently pierce the hole. But since I've done this before, my hole is already there. So once you get it through the first piercing, it's easier as you continue to do it. So I'm just going to find my previous hole and just go through and pull the thread through like this. See, I pulled it right through and you still got wick left. So keep in mind, this will be the top of the bubble candle. I know it's on the bottom of the cavity, but when you unmold it, um, this, is, this is actually the top. So you want to make sure you just have enough thread um, so that the wax does not leak through and then enough thread at the top to center with the wick holder. Um, so yes, I, I'm sure that's probably gonna be one of your questions. No, the wax does not seep through. It's such a tiny needle hole um, and the wick keeps the wax from piercing through. So that's why you have to be very gentle on your first hole piercing um, and it's silicone. So it contracts back to its normal shape anyway once you pierce it through. And the wax, I mean, the wick keeps the wax from piercing through. And sorry, the lighting is kind of jacked. It is very glary. We have a huge window <laughs> piercing through our kitchen. So that's how you do that. And like I said, it have enough to hang over. Now let's do the second one. So we're gonna thread that through just like so. And then I am going to take another hole, it's already there, and just see how easy it goes through because, I mean, I've pierced it through several times already, so. And just bring it on, bring it on through. There you go. So I have both of them pierced through and I have a little bit of the wick hanging out on the bottom to avoid um, wax spillage. Now, the best, what I found is that the best way, because this is gonna be the top of the bubble candle, I um, have found, cause normally I use my baking sheets when I make my candles, but I have found that when you use a flat hard surface like a counter or a baking sheet which is what i normally use when i make my candles it actually causes the top of the bubble candle which is the bottom of this cavity to be flat and it doesn't give that full bubble appearance and so i have found placing it on a towel which is what i always use to work with anyway to avoid messing up our counters use a towel for your bubble candles to cure. Um, so that way it can create that rounded bubble effect when you look at the top of the candle. This will be the bottom of the bubble candle. So as you can see, this right here will be flat. That's why this is the top. This right here, once you pour the wax in, this um, will be a flat surface. So that way it can sit on a flat surface when you burn it. Okay, so my wax is done. Um, I heated it up to 185. And normally with my coconut soy wax, and even when I used to use 464, 4, 4, I would, I've learned that letting it sit and cool, adding my fragrance oil at 160, pouring around 140, 145 worked great. 
um, but this is a different type of wax. And so, you know, when you first get a wax, you read kind of the instruction instructions that the candle supplier provides you to kind of help you understand how to work with the wax. And so with this wax, um, I've been playing around with it and I actually let it cool to about 170, add my fragrance oil, and I go ahead and pour once it hit 165, 160. And I do that because this wax solidifies a lot quicker than candle wax. It is a pillar soy wax. Um, so it sets up differently than a regular candle wax. It's designed to burn without um, a jar or a vessel surround encasing it. Um, it's designed to burn and stand up, stand on its own. So it um, acts differently, responds differently. Um, I like to always add my fragrance oil at a cooler temperature as possible to avoid kind of that scent throw burn off. Um, so that is what I have discovered since testing this wax. So it is cooled and ready to add the fragrance oil. So I am adding this entire jar because it takes 14 ounces, I mean 14 grams to fill up one cavity and I'm filling up two cavities. And this is a one ounce bottle which converts to a 20 to 28 grams. So 14 plus 14 is 28. So I'm actually using this whole bottle. So we're gonna go ahead and add it in. And I typically like to stir um, at least two to, uh, between three and four minutes. I know it sounds a long time, but if you just kind of set your timer and zone out, zone out the three to four minutes will go by quickly. I do that just to make sure the wax and the fragrance oil binds completely. Just another small tip to help that fragrance um, scent pop through. So let me get this stirred and then I'll come back to pour. All right, let's go ahead and pour. Oh, I'm so sorry for the lighting. It's just a wrong time of day to be filming. So I hope you all can see that, but here are the two cavities I'll be filling up. Exactly two candles, y'all. Look, and look, I get excited when my formula comes out right. Like, I hate wasting wax. And I understand, like, when I first do a new product or testing something new, I understand that there's going to be some waste initially. And I'm being so loud with this. <laughs> picture while I'm talking. I understand there's going to be waste initially, but if you can nail down your formula to avoid future waste, I encourage you to do it, y'all. It's important and so vital for inventory purposes. Like after I'm done with this video, I'm going to go straight to Inventora, which is the inventory platform that I use. And I'm going to go ahead and deduct what I use here for this video. And it's so easy. I know I use 278 grams of wax. I know I use 28 grams of this fragrance oil. I know I use two eight inch wicks. Um, I know, you know what I mean? Like you just, it's so easy to update and keep your number. So when you go to do another purchase order, you know exactly what you have. So I have, um, I have two formula videos and then I have for candles and then I have a formula video for wax melts. I have a formula video for room sprays, which is actually a formula that I adopted from the internet. And then this, I just discovered this formula. So Check it out, you know what I mean? Like, get your formulas together, y'all. If Check those videos out to help you nail it down. It will pay off. Alcohol and some paper towels. I ran out of my blue um, uh, paper towels. I get those from Amazon. You all see me use those a lot in my videos. I need to reorder some. Um, so I'm just using regular house paper towels. Um, I like to clean my pictures out immediately before the wax and leftover wax and fragrance oil settles. I'm just slightly anal and OCD about that. Um, I hate caked on wax and fragrance oil. I just do. It drives me batty like it does. I sanitize and clean all of my equipment very, very thoroughly. Um, so that way, next time I use it, I know all of my equipment is already clean and fresh and ready to go 
and it's sanitary. Like, I cannot stand it. So, if you're curious what I use, that's what I use. Nothing special, um, nothing expensive. Um, I get a bulk of the alcohol off of Amazon and then I buy the refill, the big refill jugs and just refill my bottles. Um, like I said, I use my industrial blue paper towels, which I like those better because it absorbs the fragrance oil and the wax a lot better versus regular standard paper towels. But this is all I got right now. So now at this point, I am just going to take my, um, take my, oops, clothespins and just center, center the wick like you would a candle. And just center that and just let it hang out and cure there. And here are how they turn out. So. You remember how I said this would be the flat? So this is how it looked in the cavity, right? So you see this is the flat surface. So this is what it will sit on and it's completely flat. And here's the bottom of the cavity. So you see by sitting it on a towel, it helped make and keep that bubble effect. So now I'm gonna show you how I trim these up. Okay, so once they are done, I go ahead and trim the bottom. So what I do is I, and I trim it as close. See if you can see that I trim it as close to the edge as possible. Like so, just like that. And then I trim the top like I would a candle. Just like that. I'm so sorry for the lighting, guys. Don't kill me in this video. All right. And it, you know what? It's funny because it was raining earlier, so it was kind of gloomy. Um, make sure I got a nice angle there. So just trim it just like that because that's the bottom. And then I trim the top like a regular candle wick. They burn beautifully. So I can actually show you all a clip of how it burns. But that is how you make these. So this is actually one that I've been burning for a while. And I got the light off so that way it's easier to see. So you just burn it, light it like that. And you burn it just like you would a candle. And what happens is um, you trim the wick like you would your candle before each burn. And so I did trim this, you guys, before I just burned it for you all. And then it just burns and it creates a tunnel effect, which is what a pillar candle is supposed to do. It's supposed to burn through and the outer part is designed to um, stay and keep and hold its shape. So let me turn the camera around so you all can see. So here how it looks. It's so pretty, very aesthetically pleasing. And like I said, the coat in Hot Throw is, I am not complaining um, in terms of the wax that I'm using because I want it to stay natural, stay eco-friendly, but I also wanted that Hot Throw to still peek through. And with this um, Eco Soya Pillar, um, PB Pillar Soy Wax. I have no complaints with the coat or hot throw. Now, again, these are um, 2.83 inches high. So, you know, I would still recommend, and I have this on my website, to burn in the same type of spaces that I recommend my candles burn. So, you know, half bathrooms, um, small offices, um, maybe small to mid-sized bedrooms um but my candles are not designed to burn in huge spaces and neither are these so keep that in mind when or if you decide to make these there you have it i hope you have enjoyed this video and you learned how to make bubble candles 
Um, so let me know in the comments below if this is something that you've been thinking about trying or thinking or interested in making. Um, I would love to see what your process is like and how you decided to package them and things like that. So yeah, if I, if you feel like I left anything out or if I didn't answer a particular question for you, just let me know and hit me up in the comments and I will do my best to answer your question. But I think I covered everything pretty much. So do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, right? If you are interested in any of my resources, check out the description box below and click that link. Everything is there and it will take you to all of Lady, Lady C's Digital Studio and all of my resources. And until next time, bye.